In this video we're going to have a brief overview of the Cisco UCS Element Manager and also run through what's involved in creating a service profile template, the secret source of Cisco's stateless unified compute architecture. UCS Manager as shown on screen is the main point of configuration and administration for a Cisco UCS fabric or domain. The UCS Manager interface which we see on screen is served natively from the UCS Fabric Interconnect hardware. Since we always have two Fabric Interconnects, this GUI is highly available. On screen you'll see a graphical representation of the Fabric Interconnects that are installed in this demo system. In this instance, the Fabric Interconnects are actually internal to a UCS blade chassis, which means the blade system occupies just 6U of rack space. This configuration is known as the UCS Mini. UCS used as a key component within NGIT's smart stack which in conjunction with the nimble storage array provides a high performance, highly available solution with a minimal data center footprint. Here is an exploded view of the hardware with UCS Mini 6324 fabric interconnects shown at the top of the image and the UCS chassis at the bottom. As you can see from the chassis image, in our configuration we're fully populated with B200 blades and each blade in the chassis has an internal path to each fabric interconnect. The 6324 interconnects themselves also have external 10 gig SFP ports, which can be directly connected to iSCSI storage, such as the Nimble Storage Array, an upstream LAN, or can be used for connecting additional server enclosures. This graphic is interactive, so we can hover over a particular element to get a summary of what it is. We can also double click to show details of that element. Here we see that port 2 is a network port, which typically means it is being used as an uplink to the LAN. From here we can also click through and get diagnostic information such as network statistics. Here we see a list of servers that are installed in our chassis. You'll notice that each blade is currently showing as unassociated. This is because they do not have a UCS service profile associated with them yet. If you've seen my previous video on SmartStack, you'll know that a service profile can be thought of as a personality for a blade server. This facility allows us to pre-configure templates for things like BIOS settings, firmware settings and VNet configuration purely in software. We could then apply the same personality to multiple blades by using service profile templates. This makes replacing or adding blades in the future very easy as we can apply a service profile template to have a blade up and running in minutes. So let's see what's involved in creating a new template. So first we give the template a name. I'll call it vSphere5 to reflect the fact that we'll be deploying ESX hosts with this service template. Now we choose whether this is an initial or updating template. If we choose an updating template, it would mean all future changes to this template would propagate to service profiles and therefore blade configurations that we've created from this template. This is great for making changes to multiple blades at once and keeping things consistent. If we choose the initial template option, we'll still inherit the current configuration of this template, but we're then free to make any changes we like to individual derived profiles and future changes to this template will not affect them. Each blade within a UCS environment has a unique UID. The purpose of the pool is to pre-stage a group of UIDs so they can be auto-allocated to blades as they have their profiles applied. You'll see the concept of the pool in many places when configuring a UCS system. Next we define our networking configuration. This allows us to pre-configure a set of virtual NICs for the service template meaning each blade will automatically get a particular NIC layout. I'm going to use a connectivity policy which I created earlier, which will automatically add in a set of VNICs. The connectivity policy will also create iSCSI VNICs, since we'll be using iSCSI SAN boot with our ESX hosts. This is why we're being asked for iSCSI initiate a name assignment. Again, I'm going to select a pool that I created earlier, which contains an auto-created range of IQNs, which will be allocated on demand to any iSCSI boot VNIC that are created. Next we are asked for storage configuration. In this instance, storage configuration will actually be minimal since the settings on this page relate to either local disk, which we'll not be using, and fibre channel VHBAs, and of course we'll be using iSCSI. We'll let the system perform VNIC placement against our virtual UCS mezzanine adapters. In some instances it's beneficial to define this to ensure, for example, ESX always sees a consistent VNIC order. Now we can define a BIOS boot order. I have set up this iSCSI boot policy. 
which removes all entries except for iSCSI from the boot order for the purposes of this demo. So within our server boot order we can then define our iSCSI boot parameters. So again using a pool we're able to pre-stage a number of IP addresses to use with our iSCSI initiators. We also need to include the target information for our iSCSI array The maintenance policy defines how blades behave when a service profile change is detected. This could be either automatic reboot or waiting for user acknowledgement. Pool assignment means we can automatically apply a particular service profile to a server or group of servers if it's contained with a particular pool. And if we also select server pool qualification, we can make sure the assigned blades meet a set of hardware based criteria such as the minimum number of CPU cores. Earlier I created this demo pool which contains the blades in slots 1 and 2 of the chassis. We can also predetermine the power state of the blade once the template has been applied. Finally, our BIOS policy contains a set of BIOS flags that are recommended for the host that we're deploying, in this case VMware ESXi. We now click finish and our template is created. We now need to create service profiles from our service template. All I need to do is right click the template we just made and create profiles from template. Service profiles have a one to one relationship with a blade. I know I only need two for this demo, so I'll just select number of instances as two. However, you could pre stage a large number. This would mean new blades added to the system that fulfill the server pool qualification criteria would automatically get our template configuration. So if we expand service profiles, we can now see we've got two profiles assigned, ESX host 1, ESX host 2. Because we associated the server pool with our service template, which contains two blades, we should find that these service profiles have automatically been associated with those. Returning to our equipment tab, we again see our list of servers. This time we see that blades 1 and 2 are being configured with our service profile template. Once this is done, they'll be configured and ready to use. If we ever need more blades with this personality, we simply deploy more profiles from the template and add the servers to the pool. So going back to our service template, remember that I chose an updating profile type when configuring the template. This means we can at any time go back to the template configuration and modify things if required. If we go to our blade service profiles and go to the network tab, We'll see that our blades currently only have four vNICs. That's because of our vSphere policy that we selected during the wizard. Let's say a VMware admin has requested that we have a separate vNIC for the DMZ on these blades. So all we do is go back to our service template. We need to change the LAN connectivity policy. So at the moment it's set to vSphere policy, which defines these four vNICs. Earlier I created another policy called vSphere-DMZ, which contains that extra vNIC. We now apply the changes and we should see this propagate down to our blade profiles. Once this has been applied to the blade, ESX will see an extra NIC and the vSphere admin can now assign this to a new vSwitch for use with the DMZ traffic for example. As we can see, in our server profile we now have that extra vNIC available for the DMZ. So that concludes our overview of UCS Manager and how easy it is to create and deploy service profiles. We'll be producing more video overviews on Cisco UCS, so check back soon or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. In the meantime, visit our website ng-it.co.uk or follow us on Twitter.